Hey everyone, we're back with episode two of our uh, beefcake build here on 300 feet. Uh, I was looking back at the last video and I realized the, the big reason I was getting crushed by those archers near the end was that I wasn't wearing my shield. So I just want to double check here to see if there's anything stupid I'm doing like, I don't know, carrying around daggers I'm never ever going to use. Let's get rid of these. Um, and it looks like our longsword, of which I think was Gondolin, is glowing, so we might as well to put it on now. And I think we're good, so... So we're at 300 feet, um, with an in-depth of 200, so we haven't been playing too, too fast. But ideally I would have liked to have found my second forge by now, and we haven't, so I'm just gonna kinda start playing a bit slower, because the, the thing with the artistry build or starting with artistry like we did, is that it's easy to get overconfident. Well, I mean, that's the whole point. You use this build so you don't have to think too much. But I don't really want to get splatted uh, at 300 feet before we find that second forge and really hit our stride. Wow, what is with all these stabs? Some mage came down here and exploded. Um, let's just see if we can use it. Sweet, Staff of Light, okay. so. These, in the, in the general case, aren't super, super handy, but if you have them uh, at this stage in the game, you probably have the inventory space for them because you haven't found everything you need yet. So you can use them for two reasons. One is to shake um, orcs like this off your back because the light will scare them. And the other is just to light up dark rooms because there are a lot of uh, purple molds. Well, not a lot, but this is, this is the stage in the game where they show up. So you can use your uh, your stuff of light just to to clear out that room and, and just eliminate the chance you'll get hit by one there. Wow, that was a good hit. I hate it when they do that. Go. I really don't like it at this stage in the game when monsters run, because um, every single thing, every single monster we kill can drop something if they're an orc, basically. So I want to make sure I get the stuff. Okay, so just as an example, I don't really need to do this at this stage, but let's see what happens. I'm going to fire off the Staff of Light. Okay, so it didn't get rid of them. Oh man, this is getting ugly. But I would have imagined it would have stomped their morale. And I think it increases the overall light level in the room. Uh, which, the light level of a square actually has an effect on um, monsters that are vulnerable to light. So I think it... They get minus one to everything or something if, uh, for every extra point of light that's on the square. So I'm going to switch over to this buff armor again just to get the archers off my back. And I'm going to go down here and hopefully they'll come visit because I don't really want to stand in the mouth of that door that I was in. And see, this is the kind of thing I'm talking about. Like When they run like this, it drives me bonkers. I don't have a bow yet, do I? Gotcha. Oh, I think they found a door they can't open. I love it when that happens. Okay, I don't want to screw around in this room too much. That's... There are a lot of orcs on this floor. The guy stumbled into a uh, orc bat mitzvah or something. Let's see. Okay. Oh, my torch is running out. And this is my last torch, so I gotta find one. Pretty soon. Oh, I, so all that crap I said about using the Staff of Light to light up a room. Here's an example. Okay, so... And now I'm just gonna go over here. Uh, how do I do this again? This isn't really the side I wanna do it from. There we go. Got him. Could really use a bow. Okay, this is a sign that there's something shadowy here. Uh, 
Uh, the reason I didn't walk in there is because I don't really trust myself to fight Shadow Molds. I'm kind of sleepy, and I always make a mistake, and then they kill me. And that's a really embarrassing way to die. Alright, that's all of them. So I'm going to switch back to my nice cushy leather armor again. Let's go see what's down here. So one thing I wish the game did for you is when, well, I mean, in this case, it's a bit different because it was a shadow. But when you see a mold, it would be nice if it would remember. Or any immobile monster. Um, or even barring that, just let me note a square. That would be more than enough, actually. Yeah, so that looks like classic shadow moldage. Well, and you know what? Since we have so many of these stabs, let's give it another shot. See, if I had arrows or a bow, I would just fire, but it looks like he's in the middle. Um, let's try it. Okay. So either he's in this corner, or he's here. But if he was in this corner, this is like Minesweeper, a uh, Shadow Mold Sweeper. Why am I saving? I'm trying to rest. Got it. Okay. So you want to use a heavy weapon when you fight those things, because, uh, I mean, they're not going to dodge, so <laughs> it's not really a worry about hitting them or not. And the other thing is, that you, they're, I'm pretty sure they're critical resistant, so using a lighter weapon doesn't really get you anything. All right, that was entertaining, so let's head over in this direction. And you might see me spamming save in the corner, and you might think, okay, well, it's a roguelike. You have permadeath. Why are you saving all the time? Uh, recently, I was playing on a different machine, and the thing is just, I really messed that thing up, and it's, it constantly fritzes out on me. And so I think still, or most of these Zangban clones, they only save when you go up or down a stairs for you. And it's just really annoying to lose a whole floor's worth of progress, especially when I'm recording a video. Um... Okay, so this is like a, I don't know, honeycomb vault, or I don't know what you want to call it, but usually there are secret doors here or here, I think. I think there's a variant, too, where there's just no door and you have to dig in, but I might be wrong on that. So if you have, like, a something that makes a lot of noise, like a trumpet or whatever, uh, you can you can even, it doesn't really matter, I think, what kind of trumpet it is even. You can just blow it at the wall, and it makes enough noise that the monsters inside will be like, Whoa, and try to open the door. But there's not much we can do right now to get in there. Um, it might be neat if you could, like, bang on the wall, but yet another staff. Okay, so at this stage in the game, ooh, a chest. Okay, uh, I got two things to say about this, so let's get the chest. Or, so I'm just assuming that my current level of perception, which is three, that I'm not going to be able to open this, but uh, I don't see any traps. Can't open it, so the good thing about having four strength is I can just take it with me. Usually that's not feasible. Um, those gore crows, if you see them from far away, kill them from far away, because if they blind you, I mean, for us it's not horrible because we actually have some equipment, but uh, it, it's embarrassing to lose to those things. They just pick your eyes out. And your evasion gets, I think, halved if you're blind. Uh, let's go up to those stairs. I was in the middle of saying something, though. Oh yeah, the staff. So, a lot of times at this stage in the game, the staff can be something bad, like imprisonment. I don't know when staffs of summoning start appearing, which uh, staffs of summoning bring monsters up to your level. Like, they uh, they just make monsters appear at the stairs. So there's like a trick you can do where if you're in a small room where there's like a closed door and an open door and a staircase, you can use the staff. And if it's summoning, hopefully monsters will come up that stairs. I don't know how it picks which staircase. Um, if it's imprisonment, it'll lock one of the doors, and if it's freedom, it'll open one of the doors. Stabs of freedom are super awesome because you can use them to open chests. And actually, I think if the chest is in your inventory, it won't open. That would be hilarious. But anyways, let's just see what this thing... Uh, I'm going to drop the chest, just in case this really is a staff of freedom. And then let's try this rosewood stuff. Yeah, and it's imprisonment. So imprisonment is more or less useless. Uh, it can be sort of helpful... 
it can be sort of helpful to um, escape from monsters in the sense that you can run through a door that you know is like openable and then use imprisonment and it'll lock it because you don't really have any other way of locking a door in this game. Um, but I think most monsters have no trouble blasting through doors if they can open them in the first place, so not going to bother. Um, we are a thousand experience away from being leaked. All right, new floor. I'm really getting worried about this light situation. Uh, torches are pretty common, but so far we've been out of luck. Uh, I hate it when this happens. So, again, if I had higher perception, I could probably find that secret door that is clearly there, but I'm not going to, so I'm just going to reboot the stage. Anything nearby? We want Mulep. It's the perfect time to kill a Mulep, because even if... Uh, I was going to say, even if he um, erases my map, I don't care because I'm leaking. Yes! Perfect. I'm so glad I killed him. Um, Alright. That gives us some breathing room. Yet another great potion. Oh, wow. I actually found that one. Ooh, a ring. Um, yeah, I'm just going to whack this guy. Uh And of course, there's a million of them. Well, at least it's going to be harder for them to get away here. Shouldn't have done that. I'm at the stage in the game where I just get impatient with ID, and so I just start like eating things off the floor. But I really should have at least waited until I had some hit points removed. Ooh. Uh. All right, so. I think at this stage in the game, the worst that this Topaz Ring could be, since it didn't auto-ID, is hunger. And I'm out of stuff. So is there anything... Is there an orc around? Hello? Oh, sure. Oh, they all ran down the stairs. Um, that was dumb, too, but at least we have room now. This is a really crafty version of Angband. I don't usually see this many secret doors at this stage. What's that? Another Staff of Light. Alright, so let's get rid of my shitty one. Let's grab that one. Oh, I guess, wow, I could have destroyed that Staff of Imprisonment. See, so this is what happens when you play when you're sleepy. Where? Let's go back to my... And I seriously doubt I'm ever going to use that short sword again, so... And that... Oh yeah, the Great Spear I'm hanging on to because it's Ego. It's, uh, it's annoying. Hmm. I don't usually see trolls by themselves. It's interesting. Wow. Didn't think I was going to be able to kill that centipede with a longsword, but it's... So my favorite thing about trolls is that they don't run. You see, like, he's, he's got negative morale, and he's like, I just don't care. Uh, I'm going to come kill you. But I'm really confused as to why there's only one of these guys. They get Usually they come in packs. All right, let's go back this way. Let's just deal with this threat first. Looks like they're going the other direction. That's a distended spider. Alright, well the good thing is I'm probably going to get poisoned here. I'm trying to remember which poisons I found when. One of the guys on the forums, Clouded, has this trick that he uses, I've seen him, where uh, when he picks up a potion or whatever item that's not going to be ID'd, he writes down the depth that he found it at, which is really smart, because you usually find slow poison potions, like at 100 feet. I think I was thinking that, you know, I have a video, I can just go back and watch it. But I'm clearly not going to do that here. Um, let's switch to this Spear of Spider Splatting. I have been badly poisoned, okay. So I'm just not going to worry about that for a bit. Um, and now he's probably going to run away, which is super annoying. Did I kill him? Oh yeah, poison. I think it was Crimson. Yeah, wicked, okay. Ooh, a Forge! Awesome. So that means he's probably not going to... This spider's probably in here somewhere. 
Gotcha. Okay. Uh, the reason why I said that is because usually forges are in like pretty locked down areas. And it's a for use. Badass. Okay, so... I guess... Where's my smithing skill? So I have trouble with the artistry start in the sense that... I mean, the true artistry start is that you just... You only buy... Sorry for the spazzy UI stuff. You only buy armor smith and artistry and six points in smithing, and that's it. That's all you ever do. And if you find some smithing equipment, great. If you don't... Um, you just always stay pretty much at the same smithing skill all the time. And you don't really use it past the second forge or the third, maybe. But when I start to find four use forges this early, I kind of think, well, I could take jeweler because I don't have any rings at all. But that's that's not the point of this video, so let's just ignore it. Um, put my shield back on. Uh, the reason why I'm worried about the way my equipment is sorted right now is because usually when you start forging, uh, people hear you and they come out and check what's going on. I'm going to add another point to melee. All right, what do we need? We need a better cloak. We need gloves and boots. Those are big, so let's do those first. Uh, I like to make boots because you get... <laughs> I'm pointing at the screen, clearly you can't see that. Um, you get the extra evasion, and 1d2 is actually really good for protection. Uh, I think if you make greaves, there's not much you can do with 10 skill. Yeah, you get one or the other. So let's go make the boots. It's funny that I, I need a forge to make some leather boots, but you think I could just like peel an orc face off and make it out of his face, but where uh, the next thing I want are some gloves, maybe? And a cloak. So the cloak just gives us some extra evasion. There's not much you can do here. Yep, every point counts. Uh, now I want some gloves. The gloves, again, are something, you know, there's not much you can do with them. Uh, if you use gauntlets, I really don't want that attack penalty, so I'll take that off. But then I just get some really heavy gloves that give me one point of protection. Um, I can't increase the evasion bonus. Can't increase the protection side. So this is a this is a case where if you find, like, a set of gloves of the Forge Plus 3 or something early in the build, it's awesome. Because um, you can get little tweaks added to your equipment. Um, but we don't, so I'm just going to take some plus one gloves. Because again, with this build, I don't really care about protection too much, which is probably why I die all the time, but um, I like to really emphasize evasion, because I'd rather not get hit than get hit and try to absorb the hit. Um, so now I've got my gloves. Again, another point of evasion. So how many deuces do I have left? One. Okay, so... I think at this stage I have my full evasion boosting kit. Um, and I luckily found a male corselet like on the ground, and actually a really good one. Uh, otherwise, normally what I would do is one of two things here. I would take a male corselet, I'd take off the attack penalty. Or I would do one of these things, whatever. You can you can choose your poison. You can increase the evasion or something, but you're, I think you'll only get to pick one. Um, with 10 skill. And the reason why you want that is if orchers, orchers, well, orc archers start peppering you with arrows. Um, but as you can, like, archers usually start appearing 150 anyways, so I don't know. It's This is really, um, the, the, the male corslet I would make it here to prepare for dealing with easterling archers, which come later and which are way harder. Um, but anyways, we've already got it, so it doesn't matter. So what I'm going to make instead is a dwarf mask. Again, I think I mentioned this before, but it's not, I'm not making this to wear it right now, because uh, it's like, this thing is like wearing a suit of armor on your face, it's so damn heavy, and like, this isn't a stealth build, but nor do I really want to walk around and wake up the whole dungeon. Um, but what I, I do make it for is, in case by some ungodly streak of bad luck, I don't find uh, items that give me resistance to fire before like 600 feet, at least I have one that I can swap to. 
because the fire serpents um, will easily kill characters that only have 34 HP um, when you first meet them, if you don't have at least one form of fire resistance. Which actually, it's funny because usually the, the quickest way I die with these characters is uh, to one of two things. Uh, shadow spiders because they're awful and I hate them. And two is uh, uh, out of depth frost serpents because they do pretty much, I think, the same damage as the fire ones, but I rarely find cold resist early in the game. And if they breathe point blank, I'm just dead or close to it. Stop running away. Don't understand how annoying that is. Ha. An orc thief. A little sword spin. Why is he walking? They don't usually do that. Oh no, you don't. Ugh. I should have stood on the stairs. That would have been the smart thing to do. I wish they would just like streamline so that all the orcs would attack me first and all the spiders would attack me second so I don't have to keep swapping weapons. Smoky potion, what's right axe, okay. Holy smoke! I have never seen this before. It's a pack of centipedes. Where is my greatsword? I'm gonna drop a shield, of course. Alright. Uh, I just auto id that smoky potion because. <sighs> of course, archers. Ooh, and an orc captain. Okay, so let's go back to my longsword, put my round shield back on. I was hoping the captain would follow me back. Sorry for the constant spamming escape. All right, it's a reflex, and I know I can turn off the menu, but uh, I forgot how, so. Got him. So now all these archers should run. And them I don't really care about killing so much. That's a good bastard sword. I'm going to go take that. Hopefully the centipede will follow me in. Okay, I can use spacebar. I thought spacebar passed my turn, but it doesn't. Uh, okay, let's switch to the long sword again. Back to the shield. Hell, I might as well put on this armor. And let's go splat some archers. Ooh, a glaive. That's neat. Let's wait for that champion to show up. Oh, another captain. Did I get him? Damn it. I want to get him. Ah, so annoying. Kite Shield of Protection. That's another great piece of equipment to have for when uh, Easterling Archers pipe up that. Thief, I'm going to consider a lost cause. Oh, did he come back? Your boots. Oh, I thought uh, that would have been enough to kill him, but it wasn't. Switch back to my greatsword. Tossing spears down the hall in the hopes that I'll kill one. Got him. 
Okay. Let's go back to my leather armor. What's my equipment look like? And I think there was something here. So that kite shield, if I could carry it, would be great. Is there anything I don't need? Well, I certainly didn't need that. <laughs> you hear a loud thwang. That's funny. Man, oh my goodness. This is, are they like gremlins? Do they just reproduce? I didn't mean to have steps there. Okay, so now I can get this kite shield. Hello? I said get this kite shield, please. You think at this stage, like, they can't hit me, and when they do, it bounces off, so, like, wouldn't they think to, you know, tell one of their buddies, just, like, go get the ballista or something? Clearly, this guy's not going to be affected by our little arrow. So I'm going to ditch this great sword and switch to the bastard sword. The reason why is that this one has an extra damage side. Uh, I think, I can't remember if bastard swords are default minus two or minus one. I honestly don't remember. But this is a good one. Uh, what's the weight on it? So the weight is a little bit light. I'm not impressed with the weight. I'd like it to be heavier. But um, it's something that I can wield with one hand, and it just saves me from having to drop my shield all the time. That greatsword was pretty good, but uh, this is just, I, it's simpler. So if I meet a monster that I need a bit more damage dice to hit, uh, if it has high protection, I can just try to one-hand it with the bastard sword, and if that doesn't work, then I can remove my shield, and it works almost as well as a greatsword. Okay, I think that's all of them. I'm probably burning, like, way too many turns. So I should probably head downstairs soon, but, um... Lame. Where... I feel like I was doing something stupid. Yeah, the armor. There we go. More red seas. There's a purple mold. So I'm not going to be able to get around him in that hallway. So let's go this way. Let's push my strength. At this point, I'm just impatient with keeping things in my inventory. And I'm trying to get to uh, Lore Master as quick as possible. So where this build goes, goes with me is I get 10 and 10 melee and evasion. Sometimes I'll take uh, finesse. But that's... It's really a mixed bag. So... This build is, is very versatile in the sense that you can go heavy weapons or light weapons. Um, and that versatility is provided by the fact that they put momentum in the game. But if you take finesse, I mean, you can still use finesse with a heavy weapons build actually now, especially since um, they changed the rules to be one damage side per one um, pound of weapon weight. Because you, if you get a four pound greatsword, just by some freak chance, uh, or you make one and you have four strength and you take finesse, that's still pretty badass. Like you, you'll get pretty good criticals with four, uh, with a four pound weapon. Um, but where I would like to take this build, if possible, is I hope we find some nice light weapons, uh, and then I can show you how momentum works. Just because you know, it's fun to show off the the features of the new version, and uh, it, it'd be neat to to demonstrate. how a high strength character can still take advantage of light weapons. Another, so yeah, Bastard Swords are default minus two. So I did find a pretty good one. If only it was a bit heavier. I wish I could go to a forge and like add some extra metal to it or something. And there's probably nothing here. So that's it. A how work. Super heavy armor. Not even gonna bother with the great spear. So the another advantage of having a super high strength character is um, your range with your throwing weapons increases with strength. So I'm throwing as if I have like a longbow. I can really whip, uh, 
uh, spears and, and throwing axes a really long way. So it compensates for a character like this who's having a hard time finding a bow. Where the F is my... Oh, yeah, I have it aliased. Ah! Stupid. Hmm. Silver ring. Alright, I'm just going to keep wearing this one, because I don't know what it is, but... I don't have room in my inventory for it, either. Alright, we're at 400 feet. Let's grab that potion. I think it's probably a good place to call it, because I have no idea how long I've been playing, but it feels like a while. Uh, yeah, so I guess this is just going to carry on as normal. Um, 400 feet, I, I don't really think there's anything here that, compared to the previous floors, is super scary. Um, what we do have to be aware of is, like, we're still... Okay, I guess a couple of comments. With all that extra equipment that we forged. Um, it all has evasion boosts, or at the very least, it doesn't give us an evasion penalty. Plus 17 evasion for this depth is kind of nuts. Um, you know, usually with characters that I don't um, take smithing on, if I have plus 20 by the time I get to like uh, 700 feet, I'm reasonably happy. Uh, so we're at plus 17 at 400 feet. Most monsters around here have like plus 8 to hit or something. So they're going to have a hard time hitting us unless we get surrounded, which, you know, I'm not very smart, so a lot of times I just barge into the middle of things, but even then, I'm good, so... <clears throat> uh, sorry, the evasion penalty, but... Anyways, what I was getting at is, what we really need to prepare for is around 600 feet, a couple things happen. Um, we start meeting monsters that don't care about my evasion, in the sense that they have uh, status attacks or breath weapons, mostly breath weapons that um, just cause damage, and I don't get a chance to dodge. And my protection sucks. So the good thing is, this time, is we found this kite shield of protection. I think when a monster breathes on you, the only protection that you get against it is your shield and, uh, like, maybe magical rings or something. Or, like, any protection bonuses you get from uh, your skills and abilities. So the serpents, they don't breathe that hard. They do, like, 20 damage max or something if you're right in front of them. And if I have this 1d7 shield uh, and the damage mitigated... So that's helpful if I can carry that thing around. And then if I have a bastard sword, I can still cut through its protection. Hopefully. That's the plan. Um, because what do I get with this bastard sword one-handed? 3d7. That's pretty good. Uh, and if I get, like, even one critical, it's 4d7. That's serious business. Um, sweet. So the, the plan basically now is just to, to get melee to 10 and evasion to 10, and then go for lore master, figure out what all this stuff is. What I find happens a lot in this game is that I think I posted this on the forums. You don't just have to be ready for 600 feet. You have to be ready for, like, the next 300 feet. Because as you go deeper in the game, um, the maps get bigger, probabilistically bigger, and they have more interesting features, in quotes. So you get more vaults, you get more um, special areas where there are, like, a higher chance of having drastically out of depth monsters. So all it takes is for a character like this who's a little bit noisy, like, two stealth is pretty bogus, I might go for opportunist later, which will give us a bit more. Um, but all it takes is for you to walk past one of these rooms and they hear you, and all of a sudden you're dealing with monsters from 800 feet, and you're like, oh, hell. And it happens to me a lot. Um, maybe it's it's just bad luck or whatever, but y you do kind of have to have a plan for, okay, given that I have to fight a monster that's like probably 400 feet more than I want to fight, or 200 feet more than I want to fight. So that's what we're facing with this guy. Whereas normally, uh, I don't know... I can't remember. And that mitigates that problem a lot, because at least you get a chance to look at the, the scene and see, like, oh, okay, there is a young cold drake in there and a whole bunch of greater werewolves. I'm just going to stealthily sneak away and pick a different floor. Um, or I see an item in there, I'm going to risk it. But a lot of the ways that I'm announced to a vault on, like, 600 or 700 feet is that greater werewolves bust into a room that's, like, two rooms away, and they just kill me. And that's how I find out that it was there. So, uh, anyways, that's probably what's going to happen, just to warn you, but... Um, so far, so good, and it's it's a lot of fun to play characters that are this high strength, because they do a lot of damage in a hurry. Um, yeah, so I guess I'll see you guys next time.